so you are saving the world. We are asked to be saviors of the world, but in the mind level, we're not, there are no personal saviors. Yeah. Buddha wasn't a personal savior. Jesus isn't a personal savior. It's, it's part of a misperception to believe that there's personal saviors. Now, you know, if you, if you hold Jesus in the light of like being the symbol of a way shower of, of, a, of a way out of this world, I think that's, that's very appropriate. In fact, you know, it's, it's probably one of the most appropriate kind of symbols you could use. But ultimately the teachings of Jesus are accept the atonement for yourself. You know, you can only get so far pointing at a slab of flesh and going, Savior, Savior, Savior. At some point, you have to accept yourself as the, as the Christ. You know, you can't point to a man or woman and just stop there and going, oh, 2,000 years ago, he's not here now, but he, uh, there's a little wisp of time there, a little window of time for 30-some years, and there was this man walking then for those last three years. Oh, oh, oh wow. Heal the sick, raise the dead, whoa. You know, before Abraham was, I am, whoa. whoa this guy is, is, but you still, if he could come to you inside your mind, he would say, now, accept yourself as the same. You're the same as me. We're the same one. We're the same spirit. You're not different from me. In time, while you're going through your undoing, you seem to be different, not in reality, but just in, time, in unlearning, in time, you seem to be a little different, but actually his message is really, you are the same. We are the same, we are the same spirit. That's who we are, that's, that's our identity, that's our reality. So that is the state of mind. Uh, sometimes I'll use the same example that, that Ken Wapnick uses where we both say, the resurrection occurred before the crucifixion. And people will go, what? You've got your history mixed up. No, the, the resurrection comes after the crucifixion. But we both use this as kind of a parable that, that, that you have to come to a place of healing in your mind first before you can demonstrate anything. So Jesus seemingly had to come to a place of, oh, I'm, I'm the Christ. He had to first come to the recognition, I'm the Christ. Remember the he was baptized by John the Baptist and the dove came down and this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That came before the public mission. That was, that was kind of symbolic of the resurrection. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You know, Jesus had this experience with the dove and with knowing who he was and then he started calling apostles after the experience. The resurrection was not after the crucifixion, the resurrection of the mind occurred seemingly, not, it doesn't really happen in time, but within the parable it happened before his public ministry. He, he accepted he was the savior of the world in perception, in his mind, we'll say, and then after that it was just a demonstration. He was peaceful, he was calm. At the end they couldn't, they couldn't even kill him. They had another little resurrection skit at the end of the three years, you know, to kind of put a little emphasis on it, you know, come out of a tomb and, woo, you know, that's all kind of good stuff too. It was like, woo, baby, look at this. He's like, he's, he was dead. It's, had him nailed to a cross and he bled to death and now look, he's, he's walking around and talk, showing Thomas his, his hand, you know, and with hole in it and everything. You know, it, we're just starting to realize it's, it, from the Course, that it's all a resurrection of the mind. That's what it means to be a savior of the world, not that you're somehow some kind of a personal savior. It's just, it's, that's too tiny. So if you follow this, you start to realize that, that if this becomes now your goal, peace of mind or salvation in a resurrected mind, then probably the tra trajectory of how your life was going, you know, will, it will change. Just because you're thinking about what's possible has changed, your goal becomes more focused, you start to put your effort towards mind training, 
and not towards achieving and accomplishing things in the world, you know, you can see it, it gives yourself, in a practical way, you get a whole new direction. But the, the, talk, the, the Course talks about like speeding up the self, you know, healing of the, the salvation by you know, each, you know, by doing what we're doing, we're, heal, we're speeding it up and the ultimate, there is an ultimate goal of where everyone is healed, is that, do you see that happening like, is it something that you think about, is like, maybe it'll happen in your lifetime or? <laughs> you know? Well. It's like there's all these metaphors in the Course, and there are those metaphors, you know, uh, you, you can't really know what healing is as long as one slave continues to walk the world, mm -hmm. stuff like that, really beautiful <coughs> metaphors. Then when you get into the workbook, um, there's a couple different places in the workbook and the Manual for Teachers where you can start to see there, there are different rungs of the ladder. Um, like one of them is, um, you know, can can the teacher can the teacher change the student's mind? You know, can the the healer change the patient's mind? You know, that kind of metaphor. And it says certainly not. Oh, God, okay, all right, certainly not. Then, if you go back to that's in the, the manual. If you go back to the to the workbook and you're looking, there's one point where he says when you accept salvation for yourself, when you accept the atonement, when you change your mind, all minds are changed. All minds are changed. If I change my mind, then all minds are changed. And he says, when you accept the gift of healing, he says, legions upon legions will arise and accept the gift with you. Mm -hmm. Whew. Those kind of quotes are kind of starting to give a hint that this is all one mind, and when you give up the misperception, they're all going with you. And that's the true meaning of not one will be left a slave. When you accept the wholeness of your mind, when you accept the resurrection of your mind, then every mind, every person, everything goes with you in that healed perception. In fact, even even hints, Jesus hints at that where he says, when I awoke, you were with me. He's like saying, it's all unified. So, it's not like Jesus awoke 2,000 years ago and now everyone's got a, everyone's still hacking away mm -hmm. at this forgiveness game. It's just going to go on for centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries. People are waiting, when's the second coming? When are you coming back? When are you going to come back? He never came in the first place. How is he going to come back? if the Christ never came to this world in the first place. The Christ is still in the mind of God. You see, the whole Course is a metaphor for, for you to just accept the healing of the, the mind and wake up to your eternal reality. It's all these kind of hundredth monkey metaphors or, you know, when we reach a certain right. thing, exactly. you know, those things can't really be true, mm -hmm. you know. It's not like God is up there like that old song, God is watching us from a distance. And he was watching. Oh, a very slow awakening. <laughs> I wonder God is painted as it being an old man with a long beard, very long beard. Okay, let's go through a few more millenniums. I am one. Say it, repeat it. I am one. You're not a body. The beard's growing longer, you know. <laughs> Please heal, <laughs> heal, you know, and and from a distance, you know, that's that's not very optimistic. It's it's more like you know when Ken Wapnick will say, God doesn't even know about this world. How could divine love know about a world of fragmented perception? Come on, you really think that that God would know about something? that has no reality? If God is reality, why would reality be concerned with something that's unreal? And what makes you think that, that there could, you could even bring the two together? You know, it's more about a call for us to give up idols, give up judgments, give up illusions, and open our consciousness, open our minds up to the experience of absolute oneness. 
that's what it's all about. It's not when we start to get caught up into those metaphors and we, you know, until as long as one slave walks the world, you know, you start to think, wow, it's, that could be a long time. Everyone's got to be free. When really it's just saying, in your perception, you just have to give up every scrap of illusion that actually there are separate people other than you or, or separate ones out there that are still suffering and sick and dying. You know, that's the misperception that, I mean, the whole thing's a setup to keep the mind asleep and dreaming and guilty. And you have to let go of every scrap of the illusion of the world in order to experience that wholeness. I say, isn't that wonderful? I, when I was going through the Course, I'm like, okay. okay. So that was just a metaphor. Yes, mm -hmm. all right, okay. Well, that was just a metaphor. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just a metaphor. Oh, God. Lesson 189. Simply do this, be still, lay aside all thoughts you are. You know, hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought the past is taught, or one thing you ever learned before any, from anything. Forget this world, forget this course and come with open arms unto your God. Wow! You know, even the curriculum of the Course, even the metaphors of the Course, it's all helpful, but it's all meant to be outgrown. Just like a child is always meant to outgrow toys. You know, no toys are designed, you know, to be with us our, our whole lifespan. They're, they're ultimately outgrown. Even computers, a lot of us have fun with computers, but there co there'll come a point where there'll be some experience that's greater than working with computers. And you can go, hallelujah, you know, you know, you can look at that with a lot of other things in this world too. For some people it's, they love to ski or play basketball or have sex. At some point it's, it's, you outgrow the toys, you know, you outgrow those things and you, you don't miss them. You know, they're not, they're not still a grasping for them, trying to hold on to them and maintain them.